So, uh, tabletop mode, that's your navigation. Yeah, you see everything that's going on here. You can switch from player to player. You can switch from... And whenever I switch a player, I will see that player's view in the camera down there. You can see uh, if, if Russia or if China has lost any crates in the liberation mode. You can see that the bomb has been dropped over there. So player parachuting down there. Don't hit the first person mode. This is first person. You know, it's replicating another person's first person view. Uh, you have the UI that's telling you what's going on with it on the battlefield. I can switch around here. I, so you can see I can use the D-pad, go back and forth like this. See? See what that player is doing and then go back to that player. I can see that he has zero for three. So see, he has zero kills and three deaths. So I can switch players like this to Russia, Russia again, and China. So I can just switch around like that. And go into third person. I have a player card right here. The player card is telling me what this player has equipped so far. So he has an engineer rifle. He has iron sights on. Let's see if someone has something more interesting to use. He's using the stationary right now. Let's see if we can find a cool loadout. So here we go. Here's a cool loadout. Engineer rifle, G36, heavy barrel, vertical grip, hollow sight, and canted iron sights. This is a good setup right here. And he clearly knows what he's doing, running into that skyscraper there. Uh, going into the free camp. Uh, Bravo 11, very good player there. Yep. Nice. <laughs> Then you have the free camp. This is a cinematic experience. So this is for all our players who want something uh, unique when they film. Yeah, so you have different free camps. You can. Oh, sorry. Wrong button. So you have one free camp here. Oh, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna mess up your free camps. Sorry. So I have one free camp here. I'm not gonna touch them. Another free camp. You can place. You can fly around with these in the world. And when you switch to another free camp, they're placed in the world. That's it. They're done. You can always switch them around later. And they're saved in your local CNG. So when you start a new map, you will have your cameras in the same position as when you left off. Going back here. Going here. See the final ground at the arcade over there. And the big skyscraper to your right. And then here's the main street right here. So that's the first thing. You know, a lot of ideas went into that. And when we, when we started creating this, we were thinking, uh, we want to make it easy for players. We want to make it so easy that if you've never played Battlefield before, you can use this. So if you're a super hardcore fan, you can use these features in an advanced way. So it's, it's a scope made for everyone. When, when you were creating this, did you have any heat, passionate arguments, passionate discussions with your, among your team? I mean, you know, I wanted to do this, you know, an episode. I remember also two of them. Uh, one of them is the spectator colors. Uh, at E3, we had different colors. But it got too confusing because they were too close to the battlefield colors. Going to games, we had different colors again. Too close to the game, so we had to These are the final colors we're shipping with. And um, it was very passionate. I, I don't know if something's wrong with my eyesight. I did not see the colors they saw. <laughs> and some people did not see that color either. So, so we're discussing and debating back and forth. It's like, are you really seeing that color? Because I'm not seeing that color. So in the end, you know, everyone agreed that, okay, let's just switch to these colors. It's perfect. Yeah, this just shows how passionate everyone is about what we're creating, about the, how we want every detail to be of 100% colors, to not confuse anyone, but it should be more accessible. You know, people should realize that, that you know, quality is always on top, not just throwing everything in there. So think quality first. So. Not only me, but Matsui-san, what do you think? Yes, I was mode of もう全部作られたっていう話で、あの日本の方たちがものすごくあのダニエルさんが作った完成モードを喜んでいます。今コメントでも非常にあの素晴らしいこれを待っていたという声がたくさんダニエルさんに届いてます。Thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Um, yeah, get the game, use this. It's amazing. Don't forget to play as well. Uh, but this is this is really cool. I've, I've been a huge fan of you know, spectating modes all over different games. I've been spectating a lot, spectating since I was a kid. Spectating games since I was a kid. It shows how you know how creative our studio is. It shows how flexible the engine is, how flexible the UI is, and you can see it's looking really, really good. ダイスがこういうゲームを作って本当にフレキシブルに作ってるので嬉しいです。
この観戦モードを何人もで見ることっていうのは可能なんですか So we said around four people can use it. We haven't set an official number until long. Today's four people. But we want people to watch. You know, we don't want just one spectator. So we want a bit more. So mostly for tournaments, mostly for people recording videos. You have a lot of cameras to use, but there's some shots that you just can't get as one person. So we want you to be able to get those shots with your friends, with your crew, you're filming. But like friends, like your crew, you're filming. But like friends, like your crew, you're filming. あのまあ4人ぐらいまで可能にできたのかな。なるほどなるほど。はいえっとこの観戦モードというシステムスペクターモードを使ってユーザーにどんな遊びをしてほしいかちょっと一言でいきたいですね。え、do you mean the spectator or do you mean oh the spectator? so My vision of it is、uh, put the free cams on top. Put them in like cool runs. Yeah, one free cam、uh, right here, for instance. And then you put one free cam in that in the back of that alley, for instance, so you can see when the soldiers are coming in from the ground up. So you can see the combat. You can see what's going on. So it's cinematic in a way. そしてですね最後にちょっと待ってくださいダニエルさんに皆さんサンキューの一言をあのニコニココメント見てらっしゃる方ダニエルさんに届けていただきたいと思います